and welcome to another episode of Too Broke Too Boosted, my budget Turbo Miata project. In today's video, we're finally going to be talking about tuning, Too Broke Too Boosted, and this video is going to be a general guide for people that freshly turboed their car and are doing everything themselves and want to get their car up and running safely, or at least safely enough to drive it to a tuning shop. My name is Cash and you're watching Cash Out Cars and today we're going to be going over how to tune a freshly turboed car. This video is aimed at people that have a standalone ECU in their project car that they're looking to tune and it will not really help you if you've done some trickery with your stock ECU and if you're running a fuel management unit. So if you have a standalone ECU, this guide will absolutely help you. If you don't and you did some other stuff to just get your car running, uh, don't bother watching this because it really won't help you too too much if you've went that route. Before we get too far in, keep in mind that I am not responsible for the changes that you make to your car's tuning, and that if you damage your car based on some things that I talk about in this video, it's on you, it's not on me, so just know that before you start making changes to your car and expect it to work perfectly from what I tell you. With that said, this is a pretty tried and true method that I've used, lots of other people have used, and if you follow this video and you put your own brain to work a little bit with your own car, you'll be able to have a car that is safe, reliable, and something that you could tune on your own and get it to the point where it's pretty good, or at least be able to get it to a tuning shop and have someone else that's an expert really tune it and get you in a great spot with your car. If you followed my Too Broke Too Boosted series, you know that my budget turbo Miata here is running on a speedy EFI standalone ECU. Now this is very similar to a Mega Squirt ECU if you're running one of those, and both of these ECUs use Tuner Studio as their software to tune them. So if you're using a Mega Squirt or a speedy EFI, this will all directly apply. If you're not, the ideas behind this video will still be good, but they just won't exactly relate to your turbo build. My Speedy EFI ECU is tuned using the speed density principle. If you don't know what that is, I would recommend looking into it so you have a general idea of how your ECU works. But using the software that I'm going to be talking about in this video and using the features that comes with Tuner Studio and Megalog Viewer, you really don't need to be an expert, you don't need to be an engineer. And in general, pretty much anybody could fairly safely tune a car using these softwares and what I'm going to talk about in this video. So once again, before I get into talking about three things that you need to keep in mind while tuning on your standalone ECU, Tuner Studio is the tuning software that we're using to tune the ECU, and Megalog Viewer is the um, data logging software that we're using to look at the data logs. Now, the ECU actually logs the data, and Megalog Viewer is how we look at the results and analyze what our car is doing. So the three things that you really need to keep in mind while you're tuning your own car is one, run your car a little bit rich. Especially if you're boosted, you need to be running your car rich, which means dumping a little bit more fuel than needed. Now you always wanna have your air fuel ratio below 14.7, and in boost, I would target around 12. Now this is certainly rich, but it'll make it so your combustion chamber stays cooler, having that little bit of extra fuel in there, and then you will prevent knock and detonation, which would severely damage your engine, and by running cooler and getting more complete combustion rather than running lean, you're going to be in good shape. So run the thing rich rather than lean. Number two, do not advance timing from a base tune. Now what we're going to be using in this video to get our car started and running is a base tune that is pre-made. You could potentially make more power by advancing the timing more from one of these base tunes, but once again, if you're advancing timing and you're a beginner, you don't have a knock sensor, and you just think you're going to make more power, stop. Because if you're going to do that, you're probably going to start knocking and severely damage your engine, and you don't want to do that for the little power gain that you would get out of it. Leave spark tuning to the professionals, and what I would recommend, which I'm going to talk about later in this video, is starting with a base tune with a tried and true spark map, and still even retarding timing a little bit just to keep your car a little bit safer. And number three is run a higher octane fuel. If you used to run your car on 87, run it on 93 or the highest octane pump gas that is available because once again, this will prevent knock and make sure your car is running safely and isn't going to blow up on you. 
So now that we've gone over that, let's get back into the process that I use to tune to broke to boost it. To start out, before you even turbo your car, I would highly recommend getting your ECU set up and getting familiar with the features on it. With Too Broke, Too Boosted, the ECU was the very first thing that I put in, so that way I could learn about the car as I put new parts on it, rather than slapping a bunch of turbo parts on the thing, trying to tune it, and then not really knowing what I'm doing and blowing it up. So start early with the ECU. You do not need turbo parts on your car to use a standalone ECU, and you will learn a lot while your car is naturally aspirated. So I got my car all set up with the base tune from Speedy EFI, the company that I bought my ECU from. And with that, my car was able to start. And after that, it was just little tweaks that I was doing manually to the fueling table. But you also could use the method that I'm gonna talk about later in this video to basically have the software tune the car itself. Now, you'll note that I keep talking about base tunes here, and I would highly recommend starting from a base tune. Now, what this is, is a fairly tried and true tune that is often designed for a specific car and engine that will allow your car to start up with a standalone ECU. Now, I got my tune that I started working on for the turbo build from DIYAutoTune.com. They have tunes for tons of different commonly modified cars, so if you're looking at a car that's commonly modified, check there first and see if they have a good base tune. If they don't, search around on the internet and see what you could come up with for a good safe base tune to get your car started. Now, my car was running pretty good naturally aspirated, so after a couple weeks work, about $1,200 and a lot of learning, I ended up getting my car turboed and doing everything myself, and then I was ready to start it up with the new turbo setup. If you do not change anything crazy like cams or if you don't uh, increase your compression ratio and stuff like that, your car should still start when it's turboed on the same tune as it did naturally aspirated. Now, you need to keep one thing in mind if you do this. If you tune your car naturally aspirated, your fuel table and spark table is likely only going to go up to 100 kPa, which is the equivalent of zero PSI of boost. If you tune your car like this and you're just doing it to get it to the tuning shop while it's turboed, do not get your car into boost because your ECU will not be ready for it yet. That's what I did to get my car started and it worked great there. And once it was running um, with the turbo but with the naturally aspirated tune, I was able to go ahead and scale up my fuel and my spark tables to match what I was trying to run for boost. Now on to broke to boosted, I started scaling this table up to about seven PSI. You could see on screen how I was able to do that now in Tuner Studio, but this basically gets your car ready to say, hey, we're gonna hit boost, we're gonna need more fuel, we're gonna need to pull spark to keep everything safe. This is what you're gonna need to do once we get there. So to fill in that fuel and spark table, I referenced the turbo tune that I got from DIY Auto Tune, which was built pretty much for a Miata. As a general rule of thumb, you'll want to pull about a degree to two degrees of timing for every PSI that you're running of boost. And that's a pretty general rule that you could use from the top line in your fueling and spark table, which will be 100 kPa. And every line up from there, that's another PSI of boost, pull a degree or two of timing, pull two if you wanna be extra safe, and then you should be in good shape to not get knock if you can't find a base tune to reference. Once my car was all set up from the modified base tune, I was able to start running this thing and hitting boost. And that's what I did. The thing run, ran fairly good, but it was running pretty rich with that tune. And while you're running this, the thing that you need to be most aware of is one, your air fuel ratio, and two, listening to see if you think your car is knocking. Now, if you have a very loud exhaust, it could be hard to hear, but you basically wanna listen for a uh, fairly high pitched metallic ping. And if you're getting that with your engine, you're knocking and you need to pull timing or run a higher octane fuel, or you're going lean, but you would also know that based on your air fuel gauge. If you are not knocking and you're running rich, you are in good shape to continue driving your car and dialing in the tune. Once you're confident that you're not running rich or knocking, I would recommend taking your car, starting a data log in Tuner Studio, and just going out and driving the thing for a little bit. This will allow the computer to gather a ton of data about different loads, RPMs, air fuel ratios, and basically just learn what the car is doing. Once you pull back into wherever you're going, stop your data log, and this is where we're gonna basically let the computer tune the car for us. 
Once you got back from your drive and you're pretty confident that everything was running decent with your car, you want to go ahead and open up Megalog Viewer. Open up the Tune in Megalog Viewer and once again just take a look at it. Check out your air fuel ratios everywhere. Once again, when you're not in boost, you want to be somewhere just under 14.7 for an amateur tuner. The higher throttle that you're at and the higher RPM, you could put just a little bit more fuel in to be safe. And when you're in boost, you want to be somewhere around 12, maybe just over. So look at your air fuel ratios here, make sure everything looks good. And if it does and your car is already running safely, we could go ahead and use the great feature about Megalog Viewer, which is VE Analyze. So you need to go ahead and load your tune and open up the VE Analyze feature of Megalog Viewer. And this will basically tune your car for you. So you want to open it up, allow it to analyze your tune, and what this is going to do is look at your air fuel ratios at basically every cell. If you have the free version, I think it could do like 5,000 data points or something, but that's a good amount to get you started. And the computer is basically going over and seeing what adjustments it needs to make to your fuel table in order to hit the air fuel ratio that you're trying to hit. Before you do this, you should open up your air fuel ratio table in Megalog Viewer to make sure it's what you're trying to hit. And if it is, go ahead and run the program. It'll analyze all the cells, suggest changes, and then accept changes. What I would recommend doing is saving your tune before you run this analysis, so that way if the program somehow makes it worse, which it almost definitely will not, you have a restore point to go back to. Once again, once it's done running VE Analyze, you want to click Accept and go ahead and load that tune to your ECU. Now take the car out, once again run a data log, see how the car feels, see if the air fuel ratios are more at what you're trying to achieve, and if they are, you're in great shape. You could do that a couple of times and just data log, um, run VE analyze, data log, run VE analyze, and eventually your car is gonna be dialed in pretty much by itself. Once again, doing this and running conservative ignition timing will not get you the most power that you can make out of one of your cars, but it will get you up and running fairly easily without tons and tons of knowledge about tuning, without going through and changing individual cells by yourself. And it's a pretty good way for an amateur to just go ahead and tune their engine fairly safely. Once I repeated this process a couple times, my car was running pretty great. It felt really good and it felt way better than it did just after starting with the tune and setting up my fuel and spark table as I thought it should have. So this is definitely a decent way once again for anyone to go ahead and jump in and tune a standalone ECU and keep it pretty safe. So once again, run your car a little bit rich. Do not advance your ignition timing from a base tune and definitely run conservative timing and pick good fuel to run in your car. The higher octane, the better. And you really shouldn't run into too many problems with turboing a car by yourself and setting up the tune for it. And even if you're tuning naturally aspirated, this process will work pretty much the same for you and you'll end up with a pretty good driving car with a decent tune. And so guys, with all that said, that is going to wrap up this tuning video on Too Broke Too Boosted. Obviously, I don't have tons and tons of experience with tuning a car like this, so certainly do other research before you jump in and start working on tuning your car by yourself. But everything that I talked about in this video worked great for me, it's worked great for other people, and it will allow you to get your car up and running without too much trouble. If you want to see more on my Turbo Miata project, Too Broke Too Boosted, go ahead and check out my channel. If you're interested in supporting the channel even more, check out my Patreon page. I post videos and sneak previews early over there. Like this video if you liked it and subscribe for more, and I hope you stick around for the next one. Take care.